lesson 10, we learned how to draw a cubic function. And in lesson 11, we learned how to interpret the graph. Now, we are going to continue drawing cubic functions. And we are going to follow the five steps. So it's to find the y-intercept, to find the x-intercepts, to find the stationary points, to find the point of inflection, and then to draw. And we are going to follow that same five steps as used in lesson 10. So in the first example for today, we are going to draw a cubic function with one stationary point. So here we have fx is equals to negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x plus 9. So step one is to find the y-intercept. And we find the y-intercept by replacing x with 0. So if I replace x with 0 in this equation, I find that y is equal to 9. So where x is 0, y is 9. Step 2 is to find the x-intercept or intercepts. So in order to find the x-intercepts, I take the equation of fx and I place it equal to 0. Now what I'm going to do for my convenience is change all the signs. So everywhere I divide by negative 1. So that I have an x cubed that is positive, and that's a bit easier to factorize. Now if you remember the remainder and factor theorem, is I need to find a value of x that will make this expression also equal to 0. So I test a few values, and you can do this on a calculator. And I find that x equal to 3. So if I substitute 3 into the position of x, I would find that that expression is equal to 0. So the value that I'm using is x is equal to 3. But remember that we need to say x minus 3 is a factor of the equation. I need to remember to bring the x value over and make one bracket. Now, continuing with the remainder and factor theorem on factorizing, which we did earlier, is I have x minus 3, and my bracket is ax squared plus bx plus c. And I use this in conjunction with the original expression. So to find the value of a, I multiply x with ax squared, and I'm supposed to get an a value of 1 in the original expression. So the a value would be 1. And to find the c value, negative 3 times c needs to give me negative 9. So that will be positive 3 times negative 3 will give me negative 9. Next, we need to find the value of b. So I multiply negative 3 with x squared to get negative 3x squared, and x with bx to get plus bx squared, and I put it equal to the x squared expression in the original equation, so negative 3x squared. I divide everywhere by x squared and move the values over, and I find that b is equal to 0. Therefore, my bracket is x minus 3, x squared plus 3. What I need to do now is place every bracket equal to 0. So I'll only have one solution. So x minus 3 equal to 0 would be x equal to 3. I cannot factorize the second bracket. And when I place it in the quadratic formula, I get an error or no solution. So there is no further solutions. So now I know that I only have one x-intercept. Step three then is to find stationary points. I start with the original equation, and I take the first derivative. Remember, the stationary points is where the first derivative, or the gradient, is equal to zero. So I take the first derivative of the equation, and I place it equal to 0. 
Now what I did for my convenience is I did a sign change everywhere because for me it's a bit easier or quicker to factorize when the coefficient in front of x squared is positive. But what you could have done at this point is immediately go to the quadratic formula. What I did is I divided everywhere by 3 to find x squared minus 2x plus 1. And then I factorized. I find the same bracket is repeated. So I have one stationary point where x is equal to 1. Now I replace x equals to 1, not into the gradient formula, but into the original formula to find the y value. Remember, fx is another term or notation that we use for y. So I need to find the y value of the stationary point. So I replace x with 1, and I find the y value is equal to 8. Therefore, my stationary point is 1 and 8. Now, because I only have one stationary point, that will also be the point of inflection. So I don't have to do step 4, which means I can immediately move to step 5, drawing. So I find the y-intercept is equal to 9, the x-intercept is equal to 3, and the stationary point is 1 and 8. And I try to draw the curve as close as possible to the shape that it will be. It is quite tough if you don't use a graphic calculator or computer. So in the exam, you'll have to do this freehand. But make sure that it goes through the correct coordinates. And if you indicate the stationary point and name the graph, you would be fine. In our second example, we have a cubic function with no stationary points. So we are given gx is equals to negative x cubed plus 3x squared minus 9x. There is no way of us predetermining whether or not it will have stationary points, so we simply need to follow the five steps to draw this function. So step one is the y-intercept, and for the y-intercept, we replace x with zero, and therefore I have y is equals to zero, so the y-intercept would be at the origin. Step two is to find the x-intercept, so I take the function and set that equal to zero. What I did was to do a sign change everywhere, or divide by negative one everywhere, to make the x cubed positive. Now in this case, I'm not using the remainder in factor theorem. I see that I have a common variable of x. So I take x out as the highest common factor, and I'm left with x squared minus 3x plus 9. Now I put x equal to 0, so that is my one coordinate, for the x intercept, and for the bracket of x squared minus 3x plus 9, I did not try to factorize, I rather used the quadratic formula. And when substituting into the quadratic formula, you'd find an error on the calculator, which means that there is no solution. So I only have one x-intercept. So in our third step, we'll do, we'll find stationary points. And stationary points is where the first derivative is equal to zero. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the first derivative of gx, which is negative 3x squared plus 6x minus 9, and I place that equal to 0. And again, I'm using the quadratic formula to solve the values of x, and I find that there's no solution. And when there's no solution, it means there's no stationary points. So now I need to find step 4, the point of inflection. And for the point of inflection, I need to derive the first derivative to find the second derivative. So I apply the rules of differentiation on the first derivative to find negative 6x plus 6. I place that value equal to 0. 
and I find that x is equal to 1. Now to find the y value, I need to place x equal to 1 in the original gx formula. So when I place x of 1, I find the y value of negative 7. So the point of inflection would be at 1 and negative 7. So step 5 is to draw the graph. And in this case, our graph will only have two coordinates. The x and y intercept is the same position. And I only have the point of inflection at 1 and negative 7. And remember, the point of inflection is where the concavity of the graph changes. And remember, once you're finished, to name the graph.